your boy Trouble T. Roy hit don't get hit box and talk back with another one and it goes I was trying to do this shit on my birthday I'm 36 now in case anybody wondering yeah I'm an old nigga um I was trying to do this but uh my Wi-Fi had literally shut the fuck off for a whole day so I had to go get another router today and we back on it so I just want to uh, big shout out to the Davis brothers. They did their thing. Big shout out to Mason. He did his thing. Bam did his thing. Uh, Ray did his thing. <laughs> it's a... Uh, <laughs> it's a few other fighters that did that thing, but we got we to gotta talk about the, uh, the, the, the juice right now. The, the motherfucking juice and this motherfucking shit. Boots, Jaron Boots in this. Yeah, so all I gotta say really is y'all been hyping this man up to be exactly what he isn't. Now, watching the fight against Karen, once again, Boots shows that he has mad talent. He's probably, he probably is one of the most talented boxers in the game but that means nothing if you don't have the mindset the ring iq the jab where was the jab in the fight the jab where was let me create my space so i could throw solid punches at him this dude is letting karen get on the inside of He's smothering his own shots and as well as Karen is smothering his shots. Staying on the inside, holding. You know what the best thing to do if somebody is holding all the time? Get that man off of you and use your jab. He would not even do that. This was a stupid ass fight. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 being me right now because I'm sick and tired of people saying, like, just building up boots like he's just this everything. This man don't even know if he wants to stay at 154. He's a big 147 pounder, but he talked all that shit. You can't go talking all that shit and then you look bad against a dude you already fought already. This is the second time you fight this nigga and you still look just as bad. You just look just as bad in a different way. The first time you didn't know how to cut off the ring. So the man ran from you all day. Then he said, fuck it. You, your punches don't even hurt me. So I'm going to get in your face all day. And I'm going to hit you. This man, according to what I saw, this man landed more punches in the first four rounds than he landed in the last fight all 12 rounds. Or ten, uh, however many rounds it was. The whole last fight. <laughs> He landed more in this fight. More rounds in the first, more punches in the first four rounds than he landed in the fight total of their last fight. Fight number one. You telling me you couldn't get him out of there? He hit you with so many left hooks that it was just like, wow. Like, the, it. I'm like, is your right eye working? You don't see them coming at all, or you just don't care? And it, it's just a matter of he didn't respect. Neither one of them really respected each other's power because Karen didn't respect Boo's power. Karen wasn't afraid to be in the inside. He wasn't afraid to get in there and and, and try to dog walk him as much as Boo tried to dog walk Karen. Neither one of it was working, but the fact that Karen was able to, you know, manipulate everything as far as the way that Boots was going to fight is crazy. Karen was, he used a lot of veteran tactics. 
when he got hurt, what did he do? He took a knee. What did he do after that? Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm going to get on the inside. I'm going to make sure you can't you can't fully throw your punches because you have long arms. So I'm not going to allow you to throw and fully land on me because I'm going to be in your face. You're going to be overshooting. That over, that, that, those hooks, those, those overhands, everything like that, it's not going to land because I'm going to be right there in your face with you. Boost don't like nobody fighting in front of him. Boost don't like nobody standing in front of him. He he needs people. Well, actually, no. That's a, I take that back. Boost does like people in front of him. Boost don't like people that move. Boost wants you to stay there in front of him. And he don't want you in his face. Boots wants mid-range. He wants mid-range. He wants to be able to extend out enough to where he could hit you. Extend the arms. Extend out enough. Because if you're in his face, he's going to extend past you. But if you're too far away because you're moving, he's just throwing wild shots. Y'all got to stop with this stuff. Look, y'all kept talking about Crawford. Give me, give me the comparison. Crawford goes up to 154 and fights Matrimov, who is a very well-talented, who has a very well amateur background, is a very well-talented fighter as a pro. Only, what, 12 fights now after losing to Crawford. I think 12 or 13, 12 fights, whatever. After losing to Crawford, who is considered one of the best in the sport right now. Crawford goes to this with him. Everybody's just like, oh, yeah, Crawford got exposed. He got exposed. He ain't shit. Look how he looked again. But Crawford won the fight easily. Uh, not easily. I ain't going to say easily because Crawford didn't look his best in that fight. But that's his first fight at 154. So it wasn't easily. It didn't look his best, but he made it happen. And he made it happen for sure to where when I, when I watched the fight, I knew he had won once that last bell run. And the same thing with Boots against Karen. I knew Boots beat Karen at the end of the fight, but Boots looked like shit for 12 rounds because all he did was search for the knockout. Didn't utilize the jab. Didn't create no space to set up shots. Didn't set up no shots. Literally, defense-wise, he looked horrible. I'm sorry, but Madrimov at this point, in my opinion, Madrimov, if Boots comes up and tries to fight Madrimov, he beats Boots. Madrimov beats Boots. He ain't touching, Boots ain't touching Crawford, so he might as well just go ahead and continue to keep on dodging him like he was doing at 147 when he had the opportunity to fight but, uh, but he had the opportunity to fight but, but decided to go ahead and take himself out of the uh, WBO rankings to go chase the IBF where Errol Spence was at 147. All this talk about, yeah, well, you know, Crawford dog, Crawford been ducking, Crawford been ducking boots. Bro, if Crawford been ducking Boots, why did Boots literally take himself out of the WBO rankings when he had an opportunity to fight Boots? He went and took himself out of the WBO rankings and went to try to fight Errol Spence. And then on top of that, what did he say? Oh, we, uh, we're we committed to showtime. We committed to showtime. We don't do nothing without showtime. So you wanted Crawford to come to you on some bullshit. And then when you have an opportunity, you say, nah, we don't even want the WBO no more. We're going for Errol Spence with the IBF. Fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry, but anyways. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, Boost looks like shit. And his his uh, whole answer to the whole thing was, I think it's time. it might be time for me to move it to 154. Brother, if you fight like that at 154, these men will hurt you. You're going to get knocked out. If you fight like that, that defense, that lack of trying to make things happen, all that shit, you ain't jabbing or nothing. 
I heard somebody say that he doesn't have a good jab. I think he has a great jab when he uses it. But you ain't going in there. You're trying to finesse. Finessing is not working. You tried to finesse Karen for about four, four rounds, and he made you look stupid. That's when you start getting getting frustrated because you didn't know what else to do. It's not that hard to figure out. Your IQ when it comes to boxing, boost IQ. I always say yours like I'm talking straight to the person. I know he probably ain't gonna ever hear this. Boost IQ is not all that. His talent, he's talented. He's fit. He's great for boxing. He's just not that guy. And if you move it to 147, you know what? I think if that's for the, the, the sake of the sake of, you know, you can't make the weight comfortably. If it's holding your you down, you're still young. Yes, move up to 154. But you talking all that shit about becoming undisputed at 147, and then now you just go through a fight like that. Don't sit here and you, <laughs> all of a sudden, yeah, I think, you know, I think it's time for me to move up. It's like, hey, I could see that, but you was talking all that shit at 147. What do you think Crawford would have done if he stayed at 140 or he came back down to 147 and fought you? You think he was going to get away with that bullshit? I'm sorry. Nah, that shit wasn't going to happen. I'm just saying. So, he said, yeah, I think it might be better for me to go to 154. And you're going to talk about, yeah, well, uh, you know, I do better when the competition is better. Nigga, how would you do better against better competition fighting like that? No. You don't do better against better competition. That's an excuse. That is a fucking excuse. I'm uh, that shit was sickening hearing that 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 post interview after the fight in the ring. That was sickening. That was like cringe like a motherfucker. Like, bro, he you didn't even know what to say. One minute is, oh, well, if I had better opposition. Next minute is, yeah, you know, I mean, I think it's going up to 154. Even Eddie Hearn is like, shit, I got to figure out some shit to say that's going to not bust this bubble. We'll make sure he still feels good about his position, even though he shouldn't. Type, type shit. Like, come on. Stop it. Nobody's playing at this point. Bro, you... And you have to be exposed because motherfuckers like me been saying the same shit. You're not that good. You are talented. That doesn't make you the best. If you're not going to sit there and take everybody's belt at 147 like you've been saying, go up to 154 and see what happens. I think the best fight for uh, Boots, me honestly, is probably with uh, Sebastian Fedor. I think that's a good fight. I think that's a very stylistic good fight for Boots because he can strong because Fendor, Fendor is not going to use his reach. He's going to try being inside all day. He's going to be right there in distance for you to hit. And you probably knock him out. I believe that. But stay away from Crawford. Stay away from uh, Majimov. You might be Ortiz unless he hits you. If Ortiz hits you, that's a whole other story you got to figure out. Stay away from Tim. I know a lot of people giving Tim uh, Tim Zoo a lot of shit right now, but stay away from Tim Zoo, please, because I think Tim Zoo, and if Tim Zoo gets the thing about Tim Zoo, you come you come off a loss with a bad cut and going right back into a championship fight. Somebody with that attitude, I don't know where Tim Zoo's head is right now, but if he's still in fight fight mode. Stay away from him. That definitely should be your first fight at 54. Stay away from him. Stay away from Crawford. Stay away from Asimov. I say Ortiz is a good fight. Make that fight. Or Sebastian Fedor. Make the fight. Other than that, stay away from 54 if you plan on doing some big shit. Because big shit is going to happen to you. And you're not going to like it. Pause. <laughs> So, anyways, I just want to do that real quick. Uh, this is your boy, Trouble T-Roy. Hit the head box to talk. Um, go ahead, like, share, subscribe.
comment, all that good shit. And we out. Peace.